Hello folks, welcome back to the African Flower Duke Ellington guitar arrangement video series we're doing. Um, this is the second repeat of the A section we're going to be talking about. Now this section is actually being played in concert pitch as to what is written on the chart. I typically don't play melodies in concert pitch if they're this high on the guitar. Um, but if you listen to the original version that I'm referring to, which is from the Money Jungle album uh, with Charles Mingus and Max Roach, you'll agree that you need to play it in this high register for it to sound effective as Duke Ellington played it. It's not easy on the guitar. There's a lot of unorthodox shapes. But um, if you bear with me and rewind and really write these down, practice them, make chord diagrams, whatever you have to do, it'll make it a lot easier and it's definitely worthwhile because this tune is not played that much. I don't, in my experience, I don't hear it all that much. So I think it's worth learning and playing if you're gonna do it, do it the right way. So we're starting off in the 15th, I'm sorry, uh, 13th position actually, with our first finger on the A flat note, 13th fret, first finger, third string. Second finger is on the D flat on the 14th fret of the second string. And these two notes stay down for the entire first two measures of this second repeat. So we're going to play those, right? Play those once. And then with your fourth finger, come down onto the 15th fret of the third string with the pinky while simultaneously putting down the third finger on the 14th fret G flat note. So you really have these two shapes. You have A flat, D flat, and B flat, G flat. But what I want you to do is I want you to hold down A flat and D flat for these two measures. So here's what it's gonna sound like. You can actually leave down this G flat because it doesn't conflict with these two guys. Again, I'm not gonna go into the finger picking. We don't really have time for it. Just watch what I'm doing if you really want to know, if you don't know how to do it. So that's the first one. This is 13th position. Okay, here's measure three. This one's pretty easy. This is the 11th position. We're barring three out of six. We're barring the third string, second string, and first string on the 11th fret. And we're going to start by playing the G flat and B flat notes. This is on the 11th fret of the third and second string. Play those and then put down the third finger on the A flat, which is the 13th fret of the third string, while simultaneously playing the E flat note on the 11th fret of the first string. And these alternate. So listen to this one again. That's how that one sounds. Okay? So that one's actually pretty simple. Probably the easiest one out of all of them. Okay. And this one coming up is probably the hardest one out of all of them, just to be honest with you. Uh, so this is now the 14th position. So our second finger is on a B flat on the 15th fret of the third string. And our fourth finger is on the E flat on the 16th fret of the second string. So we're going to keep those down and then we're going to put down our third finger on the C flat which is the enharmonic of B but don't worry too much about that. C flat on the 16th fret third string while simultaneously putting down our first finger on the G flat on the 14th fret of the first string. And remember, we want to keep all these ringing just like Duke Ellington did. So this is legato playing, not staccato playing, okay? Okay, now here's where it gets tricky. Um, this is a very unorthodox way to play guitar, but you, and you, some people might disagree with me, but they're wrong because this is the only way to play it and get the legato sound and to make it feel fluid like this. So we're going to put our third finger on the B double flat, which is an A 
on the 14th fret of the third string, and then our second finger is going to go on the G flat note on the 14th fret of the first string. This is a passing kind of chord here. Um, and then we come down, so we did this, and then we're going to put our first finger on the A flat, 13th fret, uh, third string, and then at the same time we're putting our pinky on the E flat, which is the 16th fret of the second string, and keeping our second finger down on the G flat, or getting it ready at least, which is the 14th fret of the first string. So we have one more time. So you're using this third finger to put this uh, B double flat note down. Be careful when you're reading this because it's in the key of E flat minor. It's kind of a difficult key to read. So just remember that when you're seeing some of these notes, you always have to remember there's a lot of accidentals in this key. So I'm going to bring it to you from here. Back to our 11th position. Okay, now this is a new one. This is on the 10th, 10th position. We got our first finger on the F, which is the 10th fret of the third string. Kind of refreshing to be in an easier position now, right? Then we have our third finger on the B flat, which is the 11th fret of the second string. And then now we're going to come down with our second finger to the G flat on the third string, the 11th fret. And then at the same time, play the E flat on the first string with our pinky. So here's your two shapes. Look real close. So here's what it sounds like. And just keep this one down, it's a lot easier. You don't need to pick it up, it sounds good to leave it down. And then just slide up one fret and do your 11th position, E flat minor, 7 pattern. Let's go through the whole thing. One, two, three, four. Okay, so as I said earlier, make chord charts out of that, uh, chord diagrams, write it in the score with the fingering, that's what I did, um, practice it a lot, use the, uh, if you have any of the music sequencing software programs like Band in a Box or iReal Pro or iReal Book, iReal B, program this, this song into it and get rid of the piano part, just do bass and drums. Um, there's really no way to accurately capture this tune without playing it with other musicians where you can look and look at them and feel what they're doing in the moment. But um, none of the backing tracks I've seen on YouTube are very good. Um, I should probably make one and put one on there when I have time without the piano. That's the biggest problem. A lot of them have piano and vibes and roads and stuff. It just doesn't follow the the essence of the song. So uh, if you do that, if you do your own version of it, you can play with the tempo, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be too fast, too slow. You definitely want to do like kind of a rubato um, approach when you're when you're attacking the notes. You don't really want to play them too straight. Even though it's a straight feel, you don't want to play them right on the beat. Du, 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 du. You're going to be like... Du, 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 du. You want to be very kind of loose with the time because that's what he did if you want to do it like he did um, so the next video video three is going to be the b section which is very different and i think you'll enjoy that one too so have fun and practice hard we'll see you on video three